In this video, I'm going to explain why and how you perform a risk assessment as part of your Cal Poly ME Senior Project. Let's start out with identifying what a risk assessment is. It is a structured approach to identify the hazards associated with your design and then assess the severity and the likelihood of exposure for people working with your design. Follow that up with identifying some techniques to reduce the risk of the exposure. And finally, monitor the safety improvements that you identify and implement. I used a couple of terms, hazards and risks. What do those mean? Well, hazards are specifically unsafe conditions associated with your design. They are often unavoidable things. If you're going to cut something, then you probably have something that's capable of cutting a person as well. That's what the hazard is. Risk are the specific exposures of people to the hazards. So a hazard may have to exist in your design, but the risk is the likelihood or the possibility that a person's going to interact with that hazard to actually be exposed to it. Risks are by definition adjustable by the design or the process that you implement. That's where risk assessment comes into play. Identifying hazards and then identifying the likelihood that the user will interact with that hazard. And finally, implementing design changes or testing usage processes that reduce the risk. Let's talk about the risk assessment process. It starts out by identifying every user who's going to be interacting with the product or process you've designed. In Senior Project, that's also you. You will be testing your product or process, so you are one of the users. But of course, it's also your end user for the product. For each user, then identify what things they'll be doing with the product. What are their tasks or activities? And then for every task or activity, define what the hazards are that the user might be exposed to. For each of those hazards, then, you want to estimate what the risk is for that particular user. For the higher risk ones in particular, you want to implement either design changes or processes for the user to follow in order to reduce the risk. And then also track that that has been implemented. So if it's a design change, make sure you put it into your design. If it's a process improvement, document that process and make sure that the user is aware of it. Now, those of you who are still awake are probably thinking that this sounds pretty familiar, and it should. We talked about the failure mode and effects analysis, and you implemented one of these at the end of last quarter. Now we're discussing a risk assessment, and they are quite similar. Let's look at the similarities and differences. First off, for the failure mode and effects analysis, we identified the failures of your design, where a failure was designed or was defined to be something that didn't satisfy the customer. Um, and then we looked at the causes of those. For risk assessment, we identify specific hazards with your design um, and consider the causes as well. So hazards are not necessarily things that are uh, a problem with your design. They may be, may be implicit in your design, but they are something that could hurt someone. So that's a difference. Both of them, however, after you identify these failures or hazards, you focus on assessing severity and the likelihood of exposure for a person. Then you prioritize actions based on the risk that you determine. And finally, you, in the case of the FMEA, implement some preventative actions, which quite often are design changes. For risk assessment, you implement protective actions, which typically are going to be um, procedures or extra guards or things that are added at the end of the design, but could also be design changes. So preventative versus protective, again, there's some blending in between those. Let's talk about some more major differences between them. For the FMEA, you're really focused on the product issues. What ways in which can the product, would the product not satisfy the end user? Whereas risk assessment is focusing specifically on users getting hurt. It is a safety focused procedure. Um, FMEA is typically done early in the design process so you can drive changes to the design. Whereas risk assessment could be performed early but is more typically performed late in the design process when things are pretty well locked down and you're just trying to make sure that you've, you've thought of every way that a person could get injured and you are protecting against those. You're reducing the risk as much as possible. And then finally, um, for the FMEA, you end up with design modifications. For risk assessment, you're primarily getting process improvements or um, procedures identified. It might also include some add-on features of your design.
So why do we have you do risk assessment in Senior Project? Well, first off, many industries use FMEA, but many others use risk assessment. We're not sure where you're going to be ending up. Secondly, in Senior Project, we really want you to do both so you can improve your design early on. So we focus on FMEA before you've completed your design in order to implement design changes. For safe testing procedures, we use risk assessments. So at the tail end of your design, we focus on how you're going to be using the device and your end user, and how can we protect both of you during that process. Of course, the other main reason is we want you to be familiar with both of these techniques, because we don't know which industry you're going to end up in. So that's a quick overview of risk assessment. Please take a look at the next video where I talk about how we are actually performing the risk assessment using the software that we've put into the ME Labs.